Let me show you how to use vehicle wrap to refinish the grill in your Aston Martin DB9. In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to use vehicle wrap to refinish the grill bars um, in an Aston Martin DB9. Now it's a common problem for the older Aston Martin DB9s for the finish to fail on the grill. And I've already shown you that in some previous videos. In this one I'm going to actually cover the details on how to actually get the vehicle wrap onto the bars. Obviously, I've done a bunch of work to get to the point where we can wrap the bars. We've <clears throat> removed the grill from the car. We've uh, disassembled the grill uh, to get the bars out. And we've stripped the bars uh, so that it's ready to wrap. So I decided that I was going to use vehicle wrap to um, refinish the bars of my, my grill. Now, vehicle wrap's been around for a, a long time. This isn't something newfangled. It's really just vinyl, um, and there's some big companies that make it. Uh, 3M, Avery, uh, they're all into making it because they're selling tons and tons of product. Um, so I went to a, a website called fellers.com, F-E-L-L-E-R-S.com. Um, you can go on the internet and search for suppliers for vehicle wrap. Galore, but Fellers is one of the largest. It has a really big selection, and they have millions of colors to choose from. So um, I wanted to start by looking at uh, what wraps were available that matched um, the original uh, grill paint color. And, you know, so I had, a, I had a flake of it and I was sitting there trying to hold this up on the, and compare it to the computer screen. Well, good luck. Um, the, the colors on the computer screen uh, don't really uh, do it, you know, it justice. And then what I discovered is that you can order these one foot square samples um, of the materials to cost a couple of dollars each. But I went ahead and I ordered a whole variety of samples. Um, anything that was even close to uh, the, the colors I was considering. Um, and, you know, they're dark grays, light grays, bluish grays, anthracite grays. You can get them in matte finishes. You can get them in a satin finish. Um, uh, and while I was in that process, I started to realize I don't have to pick the original color of the grill. And um, when the samples came, you know, you could decide, you know, that you want to upgrade to a carbon fiber grill. Um, but you really have an opportunity to pick one that you actually goes with the color of your car. If you've got a, a lighter blue car or, you know, a silver car or a black car, um, this gives you an opportunity to pick a color that you like the most. Well, um, I actually ended up choosing this particular one. And this is a, a 3M uh, wrap. It's a 3M wrap. It's their 1080 series. As this goes to a press, uh, 3M is just revising everything over to a 2080 series. But from Fellers, this is a um, called Satin Dark Gray and it's 3M part number S261. So if you went on the internet and searched 3M 1080 uh, S261, you'll find this product from lots of people. Um, but I went ahead and I wanted to get this. So then I had to figure out uh, how much wrap I would need. And uh, obviously you need some pieces that are at least as wide as the, uh, the grill, which is about four feet. Well, uh, wrap comes in uh, you can get a 60 inch wide piece of it. So I knew I needed S261 or, and then I needed the 60 inch wide roll. And then all I had to decide was uh, how long uh, of a sheet would I need to slice my pieces off. Well, um, through a little trial and error, I worked out that um, if I ordered pieces that were 
three and a, or got enough so each piece was three and a quarter inch wide. Um, that's exactly uh, enough material for doing the wrap and giving me some extra to handle. So uh, you need at least seven three and a quarter inch wide pieces. That's about two feet. Well, I ordered double that. Uh, I wanted to be able to make mistakes, screw up, peel it off, put it on again. So I ended up ordering four feet of it, but it's not very expensive. I think I spent like 50 or $80 or something like that shipped uh, to get it to delivered to me. Um, so the wrap's not very expensive, but definitely I would suggest that you use, uh, get a ton of the samples, um, make your selection here, and then go ahead and order your bulk roll, and then uh, cut it down to three and a quarter inch wide strips uh, to be able to start stretching them onto the bars. You'll need a few tools, a few of them are specialty. Um, easy things are you're gonna need a microfiber towel to use along with the alcohol. Uh, you're gonna need an X-Acto blade to, with a fresh blade in it to slice the wrap. You want a really good pair of scissors, uh, that, particularly at the ends where the, so they can do some fine snipping uh, while we're doing the corners. A uh, pencil or a, uh, to mark the, where you're going to cut some of the material. You're going to need this guy, and this is a specialty wrap tool. Um, and it's made from some sort of silicone. Basically, it was a couple of dollars up Amazon. There'll be a link in the companion blog article. But basically, it has a, a hook on one end and a, it's almost like a fingernail on the other. And that's going to be tremendously helpful when we're trying to get the film to wrap over the corners and then tuck it back in. Uh, I was thinking of doing that with like some Starbucks stir sticks or something else, but uh, I found this specialty wrap tool. Um, this is just absolutely terrific. Uh, so I would heartily recommend you have something like that. And finally, you're gonna need a heat gun. Just the most basic heat gun. Um, we're gonna use that at the end to uh, seal the wrap and uh, fix it in final position. Uh, so you don't want to skip that. So you can track one of these down. There'll be a link in the article too. They're not, they're only like uh, 20 or 30 bucks for the cheapest ones on Amazon as well. You'll need a few supplies to go along with the tools. Um, one thing you'll need is some 70% isopropyl alcohol. And we're really only going to use that to give the bar a really good pre-clean just before we work on it because the oils from our hands keep transferring to the bar. Um, we're going to use that along with the microfiber. And of course you need the vehicle wrap. So this is a, um, a three and a quarter inch wide strip of the um, 3M 1080 film that is uh, color S261. And when you unwrap it, you get a five foot wide strip uh, that we're gonna cut down to the length we need to go with the, uh, uh, the bar that we're gonna use here. Before we jump right in and we put a long full piece of wrap on the bar, um, I strongly suggest that you take some of your samples that you aren't going to use and you slice them up into three and a quarter inch wide strips and you do some practicing. Um, once you're doing a whole long piece and you're worrying about all the aspects, aspects of it at once, I think you're going to be overwhelmed. So what I did is I took a, you know, it's about a one foot long piece when you take the sample and uh, I'm going to apply the wrap and I'm just going to focus on figuring out how to do the ends because that's the hardest part. So we're gonna do a little practice run now, just like you are, and this is gonna show you the details of how I do an end. But like we st we're gonna start all the routines. I've gone to the sink and I've washed my hands really thoroughly with soap and water. Uh, I don't want any more grease on my fingers leaving uh, deposits on the film. And then we're gonna take a little isopropyl alcohol, get it on the rag, and we're gonna give a a uh, good wipe down um, to get any last residue off. Make sure you get in to the ends where you're going to tuck. And uh, you can even run a little bit, squish it in with your finger or down the groove. Use a dry bit just to finish it out. All right, to get started here, I just want to point out the wickedly sharp uh, tine here on the end on these scallop cuts. Uh, there is a absolutely tear you wide open cut, you know, sharp piece on there. And so just pay attention to it. You don't have to worry too much beyond just knowing it's there. And so here's our, our sample piece and you just pull back a corner. And this is where you realize, oh man, this stuff isn't actually all that thick. And that's fine. 
and we're going to want to do um, a bit of a stretch. We're going to want to uh, get it centered and I'm pinning it with my thumb back here. And I have just a little bit extra, maybe an inch or two beyond the end. And I want to make sure that I stretch it out um, at least three to five percent um, because there's an arc in the bar. And when you pull and lay it down, you'll see it actually lays down really nice. And then you have to keep the two sides from touching while you finish stretching out. So I kind of keep pulling the one side away, the far side away. And this is a good, this is the, you know, when you're working with the small piece, this is your time to make mistakes. So you learn, you know, that the how the film, how soft it is, how much you can pull it. You can see I'm just using my thumb to uh, press and smooth it out. Got a little bunch up going on here at the end. So there's no harm in just pulling it back, stretching it out again, working it out. And then I'm running it down with my finger. And bef <laughs> before I do the second side, I lay this over. Again, I'm always using my finger. One of the reasons you're doing that is that your thumb is actually warming the material and it's allowing it to fold uh, a little nicer. The warmer the vinyl gets, uh, the more pliable it becomes. And you can see I've basically, I folded it over. If we get a shot down the end here, where it's now laying across the other bar. And uh, now we're going to slice off the excess material and I'm going to basically let my blade ride on the opposite side, the inside of the opposite bar because I want to have that little extra bit of material. So now I have this flap that's kind of cut off and it's just the right amount of material I found for folding over. So I'm now I'm using my fingernail again and I'm just folding over a bit, but I'm not, I'm careful, I'm not pinching it at the far end here yet. Um, I'm going back and forth. I'm not trying to do it all in one motion. And essentially I'm curling the, that vinyl material around this raised edge. Now it's time for my specialty tool and I'm using the hook end to just do more of what my fingernail was doing. I'm trying to curl it around a little bit more. And I'm not squashing the end over yet. I'm stopping short. I'm leaving this little flap at this end. I do not want to pinch this down because I'm gonna, we're gonna need that to be open when I'm doing the final detailing at the end. So now I've got the hook and I'm actually got it all the way up and under. I'm going back and forth. And then I'm going to switch to the, the real hook here. And I'm trying to smooth that material out on the inside. Again, stopping short of the end. And you can have a look at that now and you can go, damn, that looks really good. Um, so you can see if we look at this end, we're just trying to preserve this to be open. Because when we come in here to fold stuff uh, in a minute, we want that to be wide open. And I'm going to cut a little excess material off this end now that I can see how it all laid out. I want to leave roughly half to a three quarters of an inch, no less than a half. Um, but I want to get rid of some of this extra flap that's down here. So I can see my edge pretty clearly there. I'm just eyeballing it here. I'm not done this side yet, but I'm just going to wing that off there. So now it's a little more manageable down there. So now we're going to come back. We're going to smooth out this side. And you may have to lift it up and then pull it out, stretch it a bit smooth it. It's kind of bunched up there. It may be hard to see in the light there. And 
this side's, the second side's easier because you don't have that other side's flap to worry about contacting. So you just work your way along here. Carefully not trying to stab your cameraman who's standing behind you with the, uh, the bar. All right, so it's looking, it's laying pretty flat. Again, I'm using my warm thumb, doing that same thing where I'm, so now I'm worrying about these things accidentally touching at that end and you may have to realize, oh, I gotta unstick them a little bit, no big deal. And we're gonna get this same routine. We're gonna have this lay over nice and flat. A little bit of heat from my thumb to help it fold. Now we're going to cut it off. And we're going to, again, keep the blade just nestled up against the opposite side of this bar. Pull off the remainder. And then we have that perfectly sized flap. This is the sharp point. <laughs> Again, I'm not folding that over completely at that end. All right, switch to the special tool and use the little claw end. I'm trying to tuck the wrap right up underneath the groove. I'm stopping just short of the far end. Now I'm using the curl over piece, rubbing it in good. And there we have it. So and we have our two ends down here still not stuck together. And we're going to go move where there's a little bit more light to work on these. All right, so we've moved into my master bathroom and my wife is really thrilled that we're shooting in here. But um, this is the best light, um, so you can see in close up more of what I'm doing here. So I have some excess material on this side. We can see there's all this extra material there. I've got the three quarters of an inch on this side, but because it's an angle cut, so I'm going to want to get rid of this extra material first. Same thing, I want to leave about three quarters of an inch. And you just maneuver your scissors in. You don't have to be entirely precise. Now remember it's on an angle, so you also have to cut on an angle. And then you're also uh, just trimming, and that'll do. So I've got about three quarters of an inch, even following around the bevel here. And uh, so that looks good. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get some working room. I'm going to work on this lower, if you're doing one of the beveled ones, um, we've got this flap here and I don't want to just pinch this over because essentially the inside part of the flap is going to stick. When I crush this, it'll be sticking all the way into here and then I won't have much gluable surface to fold under. So I'm going to do a little diagonal cut. I want to cut this on an angle and I want to get rid of this little triangle of material. And I'm going to basically go in and I cut some off there. You can see it on the end of my finger. I'm going to take a little bit more. All right, and you got to pay attention to where those pieces go because if they uh, stick to the inside of one of the other pieces, you're kind of messed up. So now that I've cut, a, cut off that little excess piece, I'm going to see if we can find an angle here. Um, maybe impossible to see, but I'm now going to finish the fold over. I can squash it flat now. And there's essentially I've sealed up the end um, and I can seal that over a little bit more. 
Well now, as I get ready to fold this flap under, I have to cut it like Christmas wrapping. And uh, I'm going to cut it in on an angle to the corner. And that'll now be able to fold under. Well, I also have to worry about when I fold it under, this extra edge over here is still in the way. So I'm just going to trim a bit of that off. And I have probably a little bit more material than I need on there, so I'm just going to shorten that down to about half an inch. So now I have this flap. And I'm going to use the heat of my thumb to just coax it over. And I'm noticing I still probably need to take a little bit more off. It's one of those sharp tines there. All right, so I'm going to fold this piece over using the heat of my finger. I'm just going to work it over gently. There's that tine. So I'm using my fingernail just to poke around it. And this is another great time to use this tool. I'm going to fold it. I'm starting to work back and forth. And I can work, I can see inside the slot, it may not show very well on the camera, but you can actually see pretty well inside the slot. And there you have it, I've folded it over. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Um, I want to get rid of the diagonal of this extra material. What's the old adage as a carpenter? All the money's in the corners. Well, you'll spend most of your time doing the piece, working these ends, but this is where the reward comes. All right, so I've worked in the, the material, and you can see that when I pinch, finally come to pinch it now, there isn't a big excess of material. It's just literally this uh, little tiny flap of material there, which is fine. Now to get ready to fold it over, same thing, I have to do the Christmas cut on the diagonal into the corner. I'm going to shorten this flap a little bit. And I'm going to cut the diagonal off of that to get rid of some of this excess material. So now I have that flap ready to fold. A little bit of heat from my thumb. This one's easy. You can get your whole finger around the back side of it and you can see I've got the flap folded down really nice. So then you've got this weird bit. You've got a, di a diagonal cut curving rounded bit. Well, it's just like Christmas wrapping. You have to think about where it's going to fold and you go, oh yeah, all that material over there is excess. So I'm getting rid of it, and then you go, oh yeah, that's probably a little bit too long. So I'm going to take a little bit off on the angle. And then you just, before you commit to a fold, you can go, oh yeah, there's a little corner there that's still going to be visible. And every time I'm using my scissors, I'm peeling off the old part I cut off. Oh. A little bit on the diagonal just to take the tip of that corner off. And there we go. So now I'm just going to heat it with my fingertip. Work in the tightest radius first. And then stretch it out into the space stick it down. And when you look at the result, it looks terrific. So, now it's tough to get a, 
the ends done, but if you just take your time and wrap it like a Christmas present, it works out well. Um, so now that I've done a sample, uh, I'm going to show you, you can actually peel this stuff off, you know, and it's good that you guarantee, make sure you do at least this once so you can get the sense of, oh, I'm not permanently committing myself. So what I found if you're unwrapping, the part you have to worry about is you don't want to tear off the part that's stuck under the little top rail. So I start on the easiest flap area here. And it's probably good you do this at least once um, so you can get a sense of, wow, this stuff does stick like crazy. Um, but you get a foot, you know, you get a foothold somewhere here. There we go. And then what I'm worried about is making sure I get it out of that little groove. So I start by tugging back a corner. And then I just focus on that little groove the whole time I'm undoing. I'll pull the back off a little bit, but all you have to do is get one side and then you'll be able to uncurl the whole thing. Okay, so once you're this far, now you'll be able to pull the whole sheet off towards the slot and it'll just unwrap. And then I'm working actually towards the end because remember I've got the fold unders at this end and I want to get those off. And there you go. And you have to check that it didn't cut off inside, but no, I got all the material out inside. So that's it. It's basically just a big used sticker at this point. And uh, I would suggest that you practice. I took, I did it three times. Probably took me a better part of an hour screwing around, but I wanted to make sure I really had this folding technique figured out. So go ahead and uh, uh, practice a few more times and then let's do a real big one now. All right, well, it's time to wrap a full piece. And uh, I've got my five foot long section here. Um, the way I begin is I leave about two inches of extra length uh, on the end and then I roll it down on the long side and then just do a rough mark with about two inches of extra material. Snip that off. Every bar is a different length, so you're going to have different length samples to practice with. All right, so you can double check. Then I want to find the middle of this roughly. So I fold it over without folding it. And I just want to get a general spot of where the middle is uh, because I'm only, when I start, I'm actually going to peel back half and cut it off. And you'll see why in a minute. Um, I've got fingerprints all over the bar. I've gone and washed my hands again. And I'm going to do a little bit of alcohol to give the bar one last clean, clean get rid of the grease. Okay, now that the bar is all clean, I'm going to introduce the special tool that you're going to need to round up and enter the hands of my sweetie, uh, the human vice grip. And I found there is almost no way I can do this without somebody to help me hold it up in space while I'm stretching it. Uh, so enlist your drinking buddy or your wife or girlfriend or whoever you can sucker into this uh, job. I've been told it's as much fun as pumping the brakes when bleeding the brakes. So I'm going to get started um, by reminding you that since this is curved, we don't want to just stick it down without stretching it because the 
outside edge and the inside edge have different amounts of material. So we want to stretch it out on the outside edge as we apply it. So you're going to see me tugging. Um, and you need to stretch it maybe an inch or so as plenty. Um, so I'm just going to peel back halfway. And it's good to have your helper maybe at this point grab onto it. And we just peel it back to about the halfway mark. They need to have washed their hands. And you need to be working in a spot where you don't have crumbs and stuff. Uh, so basically there it is half pulled back. And if you can lift the bar up. So I want to have my one thumb just behind where the paper is here. So I'm going to pin it and then I want to have just that extra inch or so beyond the end. So I've got my thumb anchored. Uh, now I'm stretching and I'm pulling. I actually now I've got like two to three inches of extra at the end there because I was tugging. And then I run my finger down the bridge. All right. So now I need to get the helper to switch sides. And now they need to hold it without squashing it on, right? So they got their hands just tucked under. I'm going to flip the flap back over, peel off the second bit. And I've been pulling pretty hard there. Yeah, got the join there pretty good, running down the bridge. So now you have this thing where the flaps, because you've stretched it, really want to fold. <laughs> and um, so I'm going to do the near side first, but I'm, so I'm going to pull the far side back up a little bit. And then we're going to move under the light a little more here and rotate it over if we can. So now I'm going to start working this side flat. You just take your time. If you've done the stretch just right, you find that it just wants to lay down and it goes really easy. Uh, the first one I did uh, didn't lay down very well. I, had a, I hadn't stretched it enough, so I had bunches of material that were starting to form. Now remember from the practice, if you jack this up, you just peel it off and do it again. So this really isn't a one shot. This piece will be wrecked, but you've got extras. So now I'm going to work down here towards my uh, sweetie. Sides? Um, yeah, I can ask her to change sides. It's a little bit easier for her this time. Just, uh, now she can at least put her hand on the one side that's already smoothed. And where her hands have been, there's been heat. And you may find that you actually have a little bit harder time smoothing the material out where somebody's been gripping it. That's okay. You can just pull it back up again. Stretch it. It's a little wrinkly down here, so I'm going to pull it up. And stretch it out. Just take your time. And there I am at the end on this side. So now's the time to look for uh, flaws. <laughs> Um, to be truthful, this is the sixth or seventh one I've done. Uh, I'm getting pretty good at it, but I've had to redo a couple because I've gotten a bit of debris underneath the film. Our hands weren't clean or we let it brush the table and we got some 
crumbs somehow underneath it. Because uh, you want to spot it now so you don't waste all the time doing the next steps. So that looks pretty good. Um, now I'm still going to need to worry about keeping this far side flap from getting in contact. So I'm actually going to pull it up a little bit to keep it out of the way. because we're not going to squash it down yet. And we're just going to hold it out flat like this for a minute. So I'm going to work on getting this edge to lay over. Again, I'm using the heat of my thumb. It helps it while I'm pressing in. All right, now I'm going to tip it up. And I want to get that, like we did in the practice, now all I'm doing is I'm just trying to get it to fold over. I... And it's a little awkward from time to time, so just take your time. All right, down at the far end here. So it's, now we're gonna make the cut. And this is when you want your helper to focus, because um, you're gonna be putting some force in to get the cut started. You don't want it to move. All right, and then I start in the middle usually and I'm using my fingernail to, and the heat of my finger to roll it over. And from the sample, remember I'm not pinching the end over Going back the other way. Again, I don't want it to fold a pinch completely. All right, time for our special tool. I'm going to use the claw tip to fold it under even tighter. Now this is a lot longer. And so just take your time. Don't just try to do it all in one big pass, you know. Uh, be meticulous. I'm going to use the hook, smooth it out. All right, so before I uh, can hang on to it still, I'm going to take some of the excess material off at this point because I've got, you know, two or three inches over here. So I just want to make it more manageable to work on things. So again, I'm trying to leave three quarters of an inch to a half an inch. All right, now I'm going to take the excess off this end as well. Now I can at least lay it flat. Is that whole side's done, starting in the middle. If you can just keep it from swagging.
you may find a few imperfections on this side because you've had to keep pulling it back. So you just pull it up, smooth it out again with your thumb. Yep. Lifting it up and I'm stretching back and pulling down. That seems to cure it most of the time. Stuff is amazingly pliable. And you might think, great, Steve, I've got it. I'm just gonna skip the rest of the video. Don't skip the rest of the video. Uh, we're gonna use some heat to stress relieve this after we're done. Um, so I've come up to the end. And here. We're looking pretty good. So now I'm going to fold the edge over. And I'm using the heat of my finger. Being careful not to crush it over at the end. Okay. Started with the knife. Start in the center, work on folding it over. Okay, I've got a little bit of contact here on the inside. I'm gonna fix that before I go forward. This will probably be fast forward. All right, well, we've got uh, this piece basically ready for me to go uh, work on the corners. And I'm just gonna follow the uh, exact same process as I showed you in the sample video. Um, next up, we'll do the um, uh, how to make it permanent with some heat. So now that uh, I've gone and wrapped the ends, you can see that this piece is uh, um, all finished up, almost. There's still one step 
um, to finish up. You can see I've got my corners all folded and tucked in nicely. Um, I've gone over it with the, uh, the special tool and uh, made sure I've really worked the, the lines in. But we're going to go use the heat gun now. And the purpose of the heat gun is, is that right now the vinyl is under tension. We've folded it, we've tugged it, we've pulled it, and it's actually sitting there and its glue is kind of holding back against the tension that's in the, fa in the material. Well, if you heat this to about 140 degrees, the vinyl relaxes. And then when it cools, it memorizes its current position as its permanent position. So this is a great way to make uh, the stick last, essentially. Um, so let's go over and uh, apply a little heat to it. While we're doing it, um, a few things are going to happen that I want to show you. I've moved over to a, um, a surface that I won't be hurt by the heat. And uh, yes, you're now seeing my kitchen counter and my sweetie is even more thrilled with me. Uh, that I'm doing this crap at home. But uh, I'm going to use the heat gun on high and basically I'm going to generally uh, just work my way along the face and uh, warm it up uh, until it's still, you could touch it, but it's it's pretty warm. And you'll probably we're going to see some probably little bubbles form, just not like big bubbles, but you'll see basically the fabric, the material warm up and then we can any sort of imperfection, we can sort of press it into place with our finger. It's going to make some noise, um, so we'll, uh, I may edit over the audio for this. Okay, so we can see here, there's just a little bit of a um, area that rose up and I'm just smoothing it out with my finger. Uh, that's not unusual. And you'll notice that when you're pressing on it, it'll feel a little, I don't know, gooier is the first word that comes to mind. It's vinyl and you're making it hot. So um, this is the whole point in this step is to just do the final smooth out. Put the gun down someplace safe. The tip of that's really hot right now. And just give it one last uh, eyeball, uh, checking that my edges are all still folded over well. It's pretty hot to the hold right now. The metal underneath is up to temperature. Flipped it over, coming back down it one more time. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's not unusual if I found that there's the odd little bit of crinkle on the tight radius where it folds over. Uh, might be, I can see a tiny bit of it there. Again, that's back in the grill. You're never gonna see that. And uh, just one inspection right down the, the money where the front part of the bull nose, that's where you're really gonna see this um, and it looks perfect. So for just, you know, taking 20 or 30 minutes of uh, time to do all these steps together, uh, you can take this grill and make it look I mean, that's as good as any painted finish that you'd get uh, on this. Looks just terrific. And now you have your choice of colors. Uh, you could peel this off and change it again if you wanted to. Um, so uh, now just set it aside to let it cool off naturally. And uh, the vinyl will lock up in this position. And this piece is done.